Hi guys, welcome to this new video in which we're gonna use a sign chart to solve inequalities. First of all, you have to keep in mind that when you have an inequality and you want to solve it, first of all, you have to find the points of discontinuity of the left side expression or function, and then find the points where this function is equal to zero, put them on a real numbers line, and take test points to determine the sign. So let's start with the first one, which is a polynomial function, so it's continuous everywhere. This function here on the left is continuous everywhere, so no points of discontinuity. No discontinuity points. Now, we have also to find the points where this expression is equal to zero, so let's write x cubed plus 8x squared plus 15x equals zero. Of course, we can put x as a factor here to obtain a second degree equation to solve plus 15x uh, plus 15, sorry, equals 0. So either x equals 0 or x squared plus 8x plus 15 equals 0. And this gives you x equals 0. And the solutions of the second degree equations are x equals negative 5 or x equals negative 3. You can check this using your calculator or your delta method to solve the second degree equation. Okay? Now, after doing this, you draw your real numbers line. Okay? You put your points, the 0, the negative 3 and the negative 5. You have negative infinity from this side, infinity from this side, and here we obtain four intervals. On each interval, we have to take a test point, okay, to check the sign. So let's take a first test point. For example, on negative infinity, negative 5, we can take negative 6, and f of negative 6, you can compute it, you're going to find that it's negative 18. And negative 18, guys, is negative. So the sign here will be negative over this interval. Now, we will take second test point on the second interval. For example, negative 4, which is between negative 5 and negative 3. And compute f of negative 4. You're going to find that it's equal to 4. It's greater than zero. Okay? So the sign here is positive. Now, of course, you can take a point between negative 3 and 0. For example, we can take negative 1, which is simple to compute. So negative 1 cubed is negative 1 plus 8 times 1. So negative 1 plus 8 is 7. 7 minus 15 is negative 8, so f of negative 1 is negative 8. Okay, you can check these computations, of course. So negative 8, which is negative. And a last point here to consider is, for example, 1. If you take 1 in the 0 infinity and compute f of 1, so a test point on 0 infinity, which is 1, and compute f of 1, it's 1 plus 8 plus 15. So it's 24, and 24 is positive. You just need the sign. If you can get the sign without computing the exact value of, these, um, of, these, of this function, so you can just put the sign. So here it's positive. Let's just put a zero here because our function is equal to zero at negative five, at negative three, and at zero. So we know that it's zero there. The inequality is this function less or equal to zero. So it's less or equal to zero. It means from negative infinity to negative five, close it here because less or equal. So it's equal to zero at negative five. So we have to include the negative 5 in our interval, and it's also less or equal to 0 between negative 3 and 0 
close at negative three and close at zero. So our solution, so our set of reals for which this expression is less or equal to zero is the interval negative infinity, negative five. Okay, closed here because we have in the inequality less or equal than zero union, the interval negative three, zero also closed. Okay, now let's move to the second function. So x over x squared minus nine. It's obvious that this function is discontinuous. So we have discontinuity at x equals negative three and x equals three because they make the denominator equal to zero. So the domain of continuity of this function is r except negative three and three. And we have also to solve x over x squared minus nine equals zero. And this gives the only solution x equals zero. Now, we take our line, okay? We put our points, we have the zero, and the function is zero there, okay? It's not continuous at three and negative three, so we're gonna make holes at three and negative three. The function is not defined, it's not continuous there, okay? Make sure, be careful, this is not defined here. But here it's equal to zero. The zero is over the line here. But here you have a hole, okay? So negative three and also three, okay? Negative infinity. Infinity. So we have four intervals. Again here, we have to take a test point on each interval. So let's take, for example, f of negative four, which is equal to negative four over negative four squared is 16 minus nine. And I said, we don't need to to compute this value. But we know that the sign is negative over positive, so it's negative. And therefore, the sign on this first interval is negative, okay? Second test point between negative three and zero, for example, we can take negative one as a test point. It's equal to negative one over negative one squared is one minus nine. Here we have a negative value over a negative value, so it's positive. Third test point on the interval 0, 3, for example, 1. So f of 1 is equal to 1. Don't forget that f of x is x over x squared minus 9. So f of 1 is 1 over 1 squared, 1 minus 9. Positive over negative, so it's negative. It's not automatic to have alternating signs. Sometimes you have two adjacent intervals which have the same sign. Be careful. Don't fill these, this sign chart automatically. You have to take a test point each time you have a new interval. Okay? So let's continue. The last interval is 3 infinity. And we can take, for example, f of 4 or 5. f of 5 is equal to 5 over 5 squared, which is 25, minus 9, which is positive. So this quantity is positive, and we can fill it with a positive sign here. The inequality is x over x squared minus 9 less than 0, okay? So when it's non-positive, so the solution here is the interval, negative infinity, negative 3. Be careful, it's open since the function is not defined at all there. And the second interval is 0, 3. Again here, be careful. The inequality is less than 0, not less or equal. So when it's equal to 0, it's not a solution, okay? So you have to, put, to keep it open at 0. So union, 0, 3, okay? So this is your solution. The last inequality is x ln of x minus x greater or equal to 0. First of all, you have to find the domain of this function because this is a function which involves the ln, so its domain is zero infinity, okay? The ln is defined on this interval. So you will not work on the whole uh, set of real numbers. You're gonna work only on zero infinity, zero open, okay?
okay? So at zero, it's not defined, okay? Then this function will be continuous on this interval. So there is no point of discontinuity because it involves polynomial function, the x, okay? And a logarithm which are both continuous on their domain. So this function is continuous on its domain. Now we're gonna solve f of x equals zero. It means x ln of x minus x equals zero. We can put x as a factor here and we will find x ln of x minus one equals zero, which means that x equals zero or ln of x equals one. Here, x equals zero must be excluded since it doesn't belong to the domain. Be careful, it's open at zero. And we have only one solution for which ln of x equals one. We apply the exponential and we'll get x equals e of one or simply e, okay? Now we draw our real numbers line. We put our limits here, which is zero, infinity. We're gonna work on this interval. And we have to put the e which is approximately equal to 2.71, okay? Just to have an idea about the E, and the function is zero there, okay? Now, we take a test point on the first interval and a test point on the second interval. For the first interval, we can take one, for example, okay? So let's compute f of one. f of one is equal to one times ln of one minus one. Since the ln of one is zero, so one times zero is zero minus one, so the result is minus one or negative one, which is negative. So here, the function will be negative. And for the second interval, for example, we can take the value four. So f of four, what is f of four? It's four, ln of four, minus four, and this is approximately equal to 1.5. You can compute it using your calculator, and you will find 1.5, so approximately 1.5, which is greater than zero. So the sign will be positive. Remember that the inequality is x ln of x minus x greater or equal to zero. So we have to include the e in our interval because it's a greater or equal and greater or equal to zero it gives the interval e infinity so our solution here is the interval e sorry you have to include the e so it's closed at e infinity okay thank you for your attention guys and see you in the next videos